Hey guys, this is Kale. Um, so I have a couple of videos I've been meaning to make and uh, the very first question I have today is uh, from a girl named Sonia who would like to know how I do shading. Um, she loves the coloring and the saturation that I do and she wanted to know um, how to go about that because she tends to not color her drawings. She's always afraid that she's going to mess up. Okay, Sonia, so let's talk about not being scared of shading and hue and saturation and values. Let's just go back to the very, very beginning of how we do stuff in Photoshop because there's absolutely nothing to be afraid of. Um, I'm coloring Anduin here really quick. This is just an example. Um, it's, it's test file. Everybody loves test file. All right, so the very first thing I'm going to show you here, I don't know if you can see my little mouse here, I've created a layer. Um, I've actually started to paint over my base layer a little bit just because I needed to not make a 30 minute video. Um, but what you're looking at here is a completely separate layer. Please note that all my colors that I'm, I'm using to paint are here on this layer and I can duplicate this layer by right clicking on it and we can click duplicate layer and it makes another layer. You'll also notice that it makes this darker and you can see where I've got dirt and grunge all over the place and that's completely fine because I just want you to see that you can copy a layer and experiment on it in any way you want and I'm going to actually show you how to do this uh, to create a technique uh, that will look really nice and can pull all the colors in from your background. While I dither around over here let's talk about something called subsurface scattering. This is like a big thing in the video game world. Um, basically what it is, is if you can see how human skin actually has a form of transparency to it. I'm not making any money off of this, I'm just showing you the wiki page. You can pop over here and take a look. The concept again is called subsurface scattering. Um, there's talk that Photoshop is not capable, uh, if you are painting in it, to replicate subsurface scattering. I'm actually here to tell you that while it may not be up to video game standard, it's actually possible to achieve that look and feel, and it also will help unify the color in your image. So I've already gone over the basics of shading itself. Um, so we know that I use, you know, the paintbrush and the smudge tool. Uh, so let me grab this really quick. I'm just going to grab color here. And there's a brush a little bigger so you can see. I'm just going to grab a chunk here on his wrist. Um, now normally I would do a nice smooth base cover here, but I'm going to show you how to blend with the smudge brush um, to create a halfway decent color. The other thing this is going to do is that this is going to create a little bit of transparency to the color that you use. You can also adjust this layer. So that you can have more or less transparency and you can duplicate layers um, to make things darker or lighter. Um, this gives me a nice painterly feel. I'm actually using the smudge brush right now. I'm not using a, an ink brush or anything like that. Um, as you can see, I, my opacity is about 78%. That's a little higher than I usually use, but I don't have a lot of time, so we're going to make this as quick as we can. Um, one of the things you can do is crosshatch just like you would in normal shading if you want to, you know, go to areas of transition here and then smooth it back out. So I can kind of crosshatch with my brush down here on his wrist and we're going to just start smoothing that down. And again, you can see brush strokes. We want to see the brush strokes. Um, I would keep working at that, playing with up here with the strength of the brush so we can go up or down and see how hard it pushes. Like, see, that can be really, really smooth. There is also a brush option over here where you can turn that smoothing off and use a more textured brush. Now, see, this is going to give you more painterly feel because I just turned the smoothing off, so you're not going to blend as easily. Um, so this is kind of a better way to do for fabric. I honestly prefer it on skin just because I like more painterly feel. But you can see where I'm starting to blend right here. Let's get back to my layers. Um, the other thing you can do is, let me grab it here. I've got, oops, I hate fighting with that. Um, any of these brushes really can give you a skin texture that's really cool. And once again, fighting with Photoshop doing this weird flicks thing that I keep turning off and it keeps turning itself back on. 
Um, let me, yeah, let me just grab this brush because it's not letting me grab the one I made for skin specifically. But as you can see, I'm using this in place of a normal paintbrush. This is actually going to be my smudge brush. And it's got a little bit of a, a nap to it, a texture. Um, and you can come over here and again, got, um, you can turn smoothing on or off for this brush. So if you turn smoothing on, see how it gets really soft. You lose that painterly feel, turn it on and we've got that texture feel to it. It's not going to push as easily. You might have to come up and play with strength. Now let's get to the good stuff. So we know that we can duplicate layers and you see how much darker that got. I duplicated this layer already um, on his face and neck. So you can see how when I duplicate it gets darker. One of the things that you can do is I'm going to pick a background color. here. I'm going to pick this yellow out of his hair. Say we really want to brighten up his skin tone and he's too dark. We're going to come up here and where my background is gray. I have a complete and total neutral background. I'm going to double click it and that's going to turn yellow. I'm going to go to my layer here and always in the way. I'm going to reduce my opacity and you can see how that lighting comes through. I mean, it'll keep coming through as you reduce your opacity. Um, but you can see if I give it just a hint here that I want to bring that through, we're going to hit OK. And then I'm going to turn my darker layer here on top. Now here's the trick. We're going to take, we've got two layers, one duplicated on top of the other. Both of them have some transparency. We're letting that color come through. I'm going to grab my eraser, this top layer. I'm going to just start pulling it away in both. All right. And you can see, like if I do this really dramatically, you can see as I go back and forth that this color has come through. Uh, I'm not going to do it quite that much because this is just how you would quickly do some shine in his hair. We're going to, I'm going to grab my other smudge brush. I hope that's better. All right, you're going to soften this a little bit through here and you can start pulling that color down. This isn't super dramatic right now, um, but as you see, I'm going back and forth between those two duplicated layers and I'm tugging that color in to create this bright gold color that looks pretty natural. Um, I'm just going to quick erase this color away from the background. You can just see the checkered background here for a minute. Um, do, do, do. We're going to take it away from his eye color. Um, we're just going to pull some of this color back. And you can see that that's kind of starting to give him a nice natural gold color. Um, and you can erase your whole background or you can just select an area in the background and just make it one color if you want to pull that highlight through. The stronger you want to make it, you just want to keep playing with the opacity on your layers. See if I lower or drop, you can see that gets much brighter. So we're going to just leave that down for a second. Um, and don't forget, um, dodge and burn is one of those scary things and it's not something you want to do on base models or anything that's going to be 3D rendered. But if you're hand painting, it's okay for some areas. You don't ever really want to use burn on skin. You can use it sometimes to get a, like a color that you want, color select it, and then remove it. But otherwise, you end up with pumpkin, and it really doesn't look very good. But with dodge, I can come up here now and remember that we've got our two layers. Um, what I can do is actually merge this layer down. I'm going to make sure both of them are visible, otherwise it won't do it. Layer, merge down. So now this is all one layer and we've kept that opacity. It's still going to be there. And I'm going to take my dodge and I'm going to come through just on the very edges of his hair and start hitting this. It's going to pick up that lighter highlight that I have in there. And we're going to create like this nice backlight effect. Like he's got lighting coming in from a window to the side or behind him. Um, it's just a quick tip and trick. I will show you if you're going to use burn. I'm going to come down here. See how I just barely hit the corner of his neck? I have it on mid-tones right now, and that's sometimes a way to keep from getting too pumpkin-y. But it's given me a halfway decent amount of shadow. I can take that on this layer, and we can start blending that in. 
and you can see here that there's like this little space in the background that's kind of like what happened here that's where i got too close on this base color with my brush and i took the background color out so if you want to just reselect that you notice like you've got a spot that's gone you can kind of come back in here and just put that base color back underneath of it because remember you are working on transparencies and things can get kind of funky um once you're all done if you notice that like sometimes when you do this you know like maybe i'll select this area and i'll make it yellow maybe i'll select this area over here with a uh, little dragon rathian and i want this background color to be blue because he's like a blue black color and i want to see you know he's not actually he's like more of a red but um we're gonna just pretend that we did that for a minute and like that's what we decided to do behind um rathian for shadow if you decide you want to kind of unify your colors like i've selected different areas for different color highlights like maybe you have a character that's in front of a, a purple wall and there's like a purple tint to their skin color because it's it's showing off of the wall when your image is finally saved let's go file save as this is test we'll go ahead and save that as a jpeg um and you don't have to do this you can just flatten all of your layers in photoshop but this for the sake of of being quick here we decide we want to like unify these colors i can actually come up here oops image adjustment color balance and i can start playing with my color balance and you've got these sliders they can drag all over the place and um, you can use this to control your hue and saturation say like i want it more unified and softer like that so I've got a little bit of red. I'm like at plus 40, plus 51, plus 53. That's the color I want it to be. That's all unified now. and It's all on one layer. So you're going to be picking those same colors. It'll just even it out so that things don't like, you don't have a really bright purple and a really funny red. You don't have like a warm, cool contrast that you weren't trying for. Um, really, that's about it. So it's kind of how to do pseudo subsurface scattering you know how to use dodge and burn there's all sorts of really fun things you can do and again if this does not work for you this is not a way that works for you there's a lot of reasons not to do things this way don't do it this way um do what works for you but this is just tips and tricks take what you will from it and play because you can't mess anything up in photoshop i mean if I don't like this layer, I can just either turn it off or delete it. So anyway, I hope this helps. Um, don't be scared to play with shading. Don't be scared to get aggressive. Like you can have lots of bright colors, lots of dark colors. Don't be afraid to pull in some background colors because you're naturally going to see that in the real world. You're not designing a 3D model. Um, you're literally just painting in Photoshop. So you can get close or, you know, at least a reasonable facsimile of subsurface scattering and that can give your pieces a really nice natural feel. Thanks for everything you guys and hope this helps out.